Hey guys, I'm Maya. I'm Jess. <laughs> and I'm Steph. And today we're going to be teaching you about congruent triangle proofs, both for regular triangles and overlapping. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, you need to know a few definitions. Congruent means that two geometric figures have this exactly the same shape and size. Congruent corresponding parts are matching parts of the same of the other triangle. <laughs> so that means that the dash here on each triangle are congruent, two dashes are congruent, and three dashes are congruent. And now the final two definitions, which are included angle and included side. Included angle is, in a triangle, the angle formed by two sides. Included side is the side of a triangle that is a side of each of two angles. So now a few passages before we get started. If the sides of one triangle are congruent to the sides of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent by SSS. So these two sides are congruent, this side is congruent to itself by reflexive, and these two sides are also congruent. So three sides are congruent, which means it's congruent by SSS. Alright, now moving on to the second postulate, 4.2, which states, if two sides in the included angle of a triangle are congruent to two sides in the included angle of a second triangle, then the two sides triangles are congruent by SAS. And here's an example of that. Because side AB is congruent to side DE and side AC is congruent to side EF and angle BAC is congruent to angle DEF, then the two, the two triangles are congruent by SAS. Now on to the third postulate. It's postulate 4.3 and it states if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So as you can see here, angle B is congruent to angle E, angle C is congruent to angle D, and side BC is congruent to side ED. So that means triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED by ASA. Now theorem 5.4. If two angles in the non-included side of another triangle are congruent to the two angles and the non-included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. For example, angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle C is congruent to angle F. And then the non-included sides BC is congruent to the other non-included side EF. So triangle ABC is congruent to DEF by AAF. In real life, architects need to know congruent triangle proofs so that the roofs don't collapse. Pretend that this is the area view of the roof of the house. The given is that A is the midpoint of segment C and segment LM. Because of this, CA is congruent to AE and LA is congruent to AM, which is definition of a midpoint. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because of vertical angle theorem, which means that triangle CAL is congruent to EAM. Alright guys, now we're going to teach you about overlapping congruent triangles. Say you're going, or say you're setting up um, a table for a Christmas party, as I am right here and you make a fancy fold into two triangles. You have to make sure that this triangle is congruent to this one in here so that it doesn't fall apart and just totally discombobulate. So here we set up a proof where the given was NAP is congruent to IKP. And our, we're supposed to prove that ANI is congruent to KIN. Now for our first step, we wrote the given again. And then we said that NA is congruent to IK because of CPCTC, which we taught you before, which means that corresponding congruent parts of a triangle or any shape really are congruent. And then we said that NI is congruent to IN because of reflexive. It's just congruent to itself. That's what it's essentially saying. And then AP is congruent to KP, and NP is congruent to IP. Yeah because of CPCTC as well. And moving on to step five, which is a definition of congruent segments, you just change the congruent signs into equal signs, as we did right here. And then we did um, segment addition postulate, and that just means that AP plus PI is gonna equal the whole segment of AI. And then NP plus yeah, NP plus PK is going to equal the whole segment of NK. And then moving on to the step, seventh step, it's so AP plus PI equals NP plus PK. Um, and since it's an uh, addition, because there's addition signs on both sides. And then moving on to step eight, 
AI is equal to NK because of substitution. So what we essentially just did there is we put that together and kind of switched it around and just eliminated the P's here and said that it was just AI and eliminated the P's here and said that it was NK. And then you just definition of congruent segments again and change it into a congruent sign because then you could say that it is SSS with the side, side, and side here. And it's always helpful to redraw your triangles when you're doing overlapping triangle proofs because, um, congruent triangle proofs, because then you can actually see the separate triangles themselves. And this is SSS, and that's all for today. At least you're not doing something that like we haven't learned yet. Recording staff. Turn on. Okay, yes. Yeah, Geometry project. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop. <laughs> I was like zooming in <laughs> on oh you. Oh my god, Maya. Camera <laughs> woman. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to work this camera. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron. And no, and then we are like, Mike's sick. And, and he, he was like, like well, yeah. And there was like a whole like hey. four five, and you're like, oh my god, and like we bonded. <laughs> Working on a geometry project. Of all the blondes I know, I've never called Steph a dumb blonde. That's sweet of you. Until now. Jess. Hey. Hey. Are you recording? No. Oh, because I heard the beep and. Did you really? Are you? We had fun learning about congruent triangle proofs. Thanks for watching!